All right, hi guys. So today we're gonna um, learn how to get onto my math lab and get started on your homework for college algebra this semester. So all homework is gonna be done through my math lab this semester. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So go ahead and open up your favorite browser, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Google Chrome. Um, I tend to have a few issues with, issues with Internet Explorer before. So if you can, try to use Firefox or Google Chrome. Um, and the website you go to is mymathlab.com. Okay, that's the main website that you'll go to every time. If you've used my math lab in the past for any other course, you can go ahead and sign in using your same username and password you've used before. If you haven't though, what you'll have to do is you'll have to go ahead and register yourself as a student. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll register myself as a student. Okay, and then what the first thing it's gonna ask you for is your course ID. So this is the course ID that's given to you on your syllabus at the beginning of every semester. Um, so you need to go ahead and make sure you're looking at your syllabus. Um, so if this is your syllabus over here, you'll see this is College Algebra, Professor Lorton. Um, if you kind of look towards the homework section, I believe in all my syllabus, that's where I put this. Um, so right here, I think it's the second page under homework, it does give you a course ID. So that's the course ID you're going to use uh, when you're logging on to when you're logging on to the My Math Lab. So make sure you go ahead and use that. So I now have Lorton02202, and then I'll click continue. So again, I got that straight from my syllabus. That's where I got that from. Okay. All right. And then again, it gives you an opportunity to sign in with your Pearson account. So if you suddenly this is looking familiar and you remember maybe you have a Pearson account, you can go ahead and do that. Um, but let's go ahead and create a new one for those of us who haven't done that yet. We can create a new one. And it does show you this is the course that you're signing up for, so you can double check that it's the right one. Math 121, Section 10, Spring 2014, Lorton. Let's go ahead and create a new account. So you need an email address, a username, a password, and so on. So it's best if you use um, an email address that you're going to check most often. I would like, obviously, if you use your one from your school account. However, if you know you're never going to use check that email address, use maybe your personal one, one that you're going to um, check very often and your email address should be your username. Alright, once you've created your account, this is the screen it's going to take you to. Now this is the screen that you have a couple of options for. If you bought the textbook through the uh, bookstore and it came with an access code for my math lab, now is when you're going to press on access code and enter, I think it's a 30 character long access code. Or if you're just using your credit card or PayPal, you can go ahead and pay for it right now just through that. That's the best way. It's fast. That way you don't have to go to a bookstore. Um, so that's how you would pay for that. Um, also, those of you who aren't ready to pay for it quite yet, or maybe you're not sure if you're going to drop the class or not, or you're waiting for financial aid, whatever that might be, you do get 14 days for free. So go over here to the bottom of that screen, fine print, real nice and small, but it is fine print. You can have temporary access without payment for 14 days. So I'm going to go ahead and do that so you guys can see you can still get on and do your homework. You have 14 days to pay that um, access code. This is the course I've registered for. Here's my username, my email address, my account ID number, um, the order date, and so on. And then I can click go to my course. Once I've registered, I can go straight to my course. So this is what it's now going to look like every time from here on out when you go to mymathlab.com and you enter that email address you used and that password you use, this is now going to be your home screen because you don't have to register anymore. You've already registered. So this is now going to be your home screen. Um, those of you who have already used my math lab before and you went ahead and just signed in already, you could have clicked enrolled in another course to add this current math course that you're in now. Um, so those are those two different options. But either way, once you're enrolled, you're here. This is what the course looks like. Um, it'll always show up in red when you have temporary access. So it'll be this red warning. It's kind of like a nice little countdown for you guys um, to make sure that you pay before the expiration. So that way um, you can continue to do your homework throughout the semester. Okay, so now that we're logged on and registered, let's go ahead and click on the course and get started with the homework. So on the course home, it has a, a little calendar, sort of results, things like that. I don't really use the announcements on my math lab. So mostly the announcements are things from Pearson, things like just additional tutoring services and 
checking your internet help or IT help, whatever it is that you might need could be in there. Um, and then really what I think would be best for this course for you guys to use is these tools over here on the left. Homework obviously is going to be the one you're going to use the most often. Okay. And then um, if you look down here closer to the bottom, you'll see one multimedia library. This one actually opens up the electronic textbook. For those of you who didn't purchase the textbook, you can get that textbook through this multimedia library right here. So those are the things that you're going to be using the most often. Let's do the homework because obviously that's the one that's going to be the number one used. Click on homework. And what's kind of unfortunate about the way this is set up, and I haven't found a way to fix this yet, but right here it shows you that it's highlighted homework, but really you need to show all so that you can do the prerequisites before it lets you open the homework. So it's not default to that yet, and I'm sorry. So make sure you're under show all and you go to the very beginning. So I've, I've got it so all assignments are shown right at the beginning of a semester so you can see everything that's expected of you. First thing is the chapter one skills check. Now they call this a quiz, but keep in mind, notice over here you have infinitely many attempts to finish it. So the point of this is this is all prerequisite skills that you should have known from the previous courses or the last time you took a math class that got you tested into this class, those types of things. So these are just skills checks to make sure you're kind of on top of it. Once you've passed this chapter one skills check and the skills review homework, then these um, little flags on the side will go away and you'll be allowed to open your chapter one homework. What these flags are saying is it says you must score at least an 80% on chapter one skills check before starting this assignment. Um, so you can't actually open it until you've finished the prerequisite assignment. So let's go to the chapter one skills check and see what it looks like. So it opens in a new window, gives you a nice little warning. Um, you must submit this assignment before you can begin, etc., etc. Click I'm ready to start. There's no time limit on these ones either. So these you have time to, don't feel like you have any pressure. Okay, all right, so then here's, there's 10 questions for the skills check. So we go through and we can solve all 10 of these questions. Okay, so once you're done answering all the questions, go ahead and click submit quiz and see what happens. See how we did. We'll give you a quiz summary. Okay, so it looks like I got an 80%. So this is what you should do. You should always look at what you got wrong. So I wanted to make sure you guys can see what happens. You're allowed to click on the ones that you got wrong. You have the red X. So you can see, remember what the question was. Maybe you can remember your mistake. Maybe you missed a, a number. Anything like that could have happened. So there you go. So that's when, once you click on it, you're allowed to open that up. It reviews it. It tells you, you answered 13 out of 24. But it also tells you the correct answer was 11 out of 24. So that's also really, really, really helpful to be able to see what the correct answer was as well as what you answered. And then, so you can do that to all the other ones that you got wrong. Once you're done, go ahead and close that. Okay, and then it brings you back to this homework. Again, go back and click the show all. Okay, and go back to the first assignment. Okay, so now I've got, you can click the C score on that. I got an 80%. And then you can click the C score on the next assignment as well. It gave me an automatic 50% because I got really good on the quit, on the skills check. So it already did half of it for me. So I don't have, I only have to do half of this. So then when you go to the skills review homework, it's the same thing. Click on the ones that haven't been answered yet and see what you can do for those. These types of homework problems, just so you know, this obviously looks different than the way a quiz did. Once you type in an answer, let's say I think the answer is six here, you can click check your answer. If it's incorrect, it gives you kind of a little hint here. Maybe you forgot the LCD, maybe you forgot to write the fractions with the LCD, whatever it might be. So then you can try again. You have infinitely many tries. If you keep trying and you get it wrong three times in a row, let me show you what happened. That was the second time I got it wrong. The third time I got it wrong, it tells me the correct answer. When I click done, what I can do next is then do a similar exercise down here at the bottom. And then that, what it does is gives me the same type of problem, just the different um, numbers. You can go ahead and click OK, and it should bring you right back to that same homework that we've been at. Only now, notice what has happened is that there's no longer those flags next to chapter one. 
you have now opened up your chapter one homework. So the skills check and the skills review homework has to be done before you can do your chapter homework. So now you can go ahead and actually click on the 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1 and so on. What I'm checking for a grade are these chapter homeworks. I'm actually not doing the skills check or skills review as part of your grade. Your grade is just going to be the chapter homework, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and so on. So then you can go ahead and do the same thing. These will look very similar to all the other homeworks. Chapter one, you'll see exactly how many questions there are. You can click on the first one, and you can do the same thing that we've been doing. Every time you get it wrong, you can certainly do a similar exercise as well. You get infinitely many tries. There's no excuse that you shouldn't get 100% on the homework because you have infinitely many tries. You just have to make sure that you stay on top of it and don't fall behind. If at any point you struggle with the homework, over here on the right-hand side are a little bit of extra tools for you. This view and example is probably one of the best ones. It, it does very similar. Notice that the two problems are almost identical, just different numbers. And then over here, it just solves it for you. So it goes through step-by-step step explaining each step along the way of how to solve these types of problems. So that could be very helpful, especially if you're really lost. I recommend first that you try it on your own first. Try looking at your notes first. Click those view and examples and help me solve it only as a last resort if you couldn't do it on your own. Really try to do it on your own first because come in class when you have quizzes and tests, you won't have those buttons there. So make sure you try to do it on your own first. And then whenever you're done with the section, you can always click save, come back to it at a later date. If you maybe did half of it today, you're going to do the other half tomorrow. You can always come back to it. Um, and then if at any time you struggle with any of this, if there's any questions, concerns, please feel free to let me know. Hopefully this was helpful, gave you guys a really good start into my math lab. Um, and you really, I recommend playing around with these different tools that we have available for you. There's tools for success. There's the multimedia library. There's even tutoring services. Take advantage of this since you've paid for it. Take advantage of all that's there for you. It's really, really helpful. All right. Thank you. Hope this is helpful.